Welcome, everyone. My name is David Braun. My research focuses on the optimal control and innovative design of mechanically adaptive robots. In this video, I will discuss the pioneering concept of energetically conservative variable stiffness springs and their applications in robotics and human augmentation devices. Consider the actions of sitting down and standing up from a chair or moving heavy objects vertically between factory lines. These are cyclic tasks that demand substantial force, yet they necessitate zero net mechanical energy over a complete cycle. Motor-driven artificial limbs and industrial robots can assist with cyclic tasks, but motors require energy to generate force even when they do not supply net mechanical energy. Springs are energetically conservative mechanical elements, beneficial for building robots that require only a small amount of energy during cyclic tasks. However, conventional fixed stiffness springs can be constrained by their non-customizable force deflection characteristics. For instance, they may fail to meet the force requirements for upward movement from a static equilibrium, despite having sufficient energy to do so. Variable stiffness springs are a special type of spring with customizable force deflection behavior. However, similar to motors, most typical variable stiffness springs require energy to amplify force in order to meet the force demand necessary for performing a net zero energy cost task, despite storing enough energy to perform the task. In this video, I want to introduce a new type of variable stiffness spring characterized by its energetically conservative nature, despite offering customizable force deflection behavior. In the remainder of this talk, I will discuss the design and working principle of the device implemented in a robot leg. Consider a leg-like structure where the spring is connected to the leg using sliders. Assume that the sliders can either be locked to the leg or unlocked, allowing them to move freely along the leg. Also, assume that the length of the spring can be locked such that it does not release any energy unless it is unlocked. When the spring is unlocked, it is expected to provide more force in the red configuration compared to the blue configuration due to its larger moment arm measured from the knee joint. In a typical work loop, we initially compress the leg at low stiffness, then adjust the mechanical advantage of the spring by reorienting it, and finally extend the leg at high stiffness. The force transitions from low during compression to high during expansion, as depicted in the force compression plot. However, the area under the force curve remains constant, as illustrated in the energy compression plot. This confirms that the floating spring leg functions as an energetically conservative variable stiffness spring. The picture shows the prototype floating spring leg. It comprises a leg-like structure, a lockable spring, and two self-locking sliders one of which, depicted on the right, is motorized. The lockable spring comprises a capstan clutch, solenoid, locking cable, and a die spring. The spring can be compressed, and its length can be locked or unlocked using the solenoid to any compressed length. The force deflection diagram illustrates that the spring can store a significant amount of energy, as it can be locked when exerting more than 1 kN of force at around 80 mm of compression. The motorized slider utilizes string actuation to reorient the spring by moving the endpoints of the spring along the leg. The energy cost of reorienting the spring depends on the speed and distance moved by the slider, but not on the energy stored by the spring. The figure on the right shows the cost of adjusting the leg stiffness from near minimum to near maximum values. To explore the capabilities of energetically conservative variable stiffness devices in practical applications, let's examine a simple task, standing up from a chair while being assisted with the spring limb. Let's consider the scenario where the spring is initially set to a low stiffness configuration and the mechanism is compressed until static equilibrium is reached, fully supporting the user. Now, if the user wants to stand up, despite the energy stored in the spring, the system remains at static equilibrium and cannot lift the weight upwards. This limitation applies to most typical spring-driven assistive devices. However, if we lock the spring, reorient it, and then unlock it in the new configuration, the spring will generate more force despite having the same energy stored, helping the user move upwards towards a new static equilibrium position. The figure on the right showcases the experimental data, affirming the novel capability of the floating spring leg. Energetically conservative variable stiffness springs may provide better assistance to the elderly when standing up from a chair compared to conventional spring-driven assistive devices. They could achieve this without the need for motors or batteries to supply large amounts of energy. In this video, we have explored the innovative capabilities of energetically conservative variable stiffness springs and their potential to advance mechanically adaptive robotics. I hope that the video motivated questions and will fuel future innovations.